Hello, muscle car fans. So I got this Hot Wheels I picked up loose at a used toy shop, so no packaging. But I think we all familiar. We're all familiar with the uh, Hot Wheels packaging, it's, it's whatever. So, anyways, let's see if uh, this thing matches up with these photographs at all. The details there. This is a 1970 Buick GSX, and uh, looking at the GM Heritage website here, it's saying it was powered by a 350 horsepower 455 cubic inch V8. It had 500, 510 pound-feet of torque. Uh, had a ram air hood. Uh, let's see, and there are only two colors, either the white one or the yellow one. The majority were yellow, I guess. Uh, so. Anyways, you can pause the video as we go along, obviously. Let's see about the scale of this guy. So, supposedly the wheelbase, according to the official website, is 2845 millimeters. So, let me get the calipers out. 2845 millimeters divided by... Maybe 44.3. Hey, what do you know, guys? It's around 164 scale. So, nice. That's one of the, yeah. You know, it seems like uh, I've had a good run with Hot Wheels coming in around 164. Sure, not all of them, but amazingly, uh, a lot of them. So, it's good. Okay, let's get those calipers away. Those things are pointy. Uh, so obviously this is not an original factory color. I'm sure those castings uh, came out many years ago. In fact, when did this thing come out? Well, this is weird. Again, this is about used. It says C13, but, you know, it doesn't say any... Does that mean the copyright was 2013? Because there, there's nothing there. It's kind of strange. Alright, well anyways. This graphic, uh can't really say this graphic matches those cars either, but I'm okay with it. What I do like is it says GSX here on the side. Uh, I guess that's Grand Sport. I don't know what the X means though. Hmm. Anyone knows, please leave a comment. Another thing I'm looking at the website says this car sold for around $5,000 back in 1970. Alright, so this was a little misprinted, the silver and red reflector there. Same with there, it's all like shifted a bit off. But, uh, yeah, the key protrusion, the lock there, and the door handle are sticking out. Although, you know, the printing's a little off. This one has the staggered rear wheels, which, eh, well, you know, I'm starting to accept these more and more because I'm going to just clip these wheels off and put them on my Choro Qs, which have staggered rear wheels. This one's going to get a 3D print. All right. So, decent enough Hot Wheels details. Can't really complain about this stuff. Obviously, some extra color would be nice, but it's not hard to do. Some paint markers and black paint pen there and orange there, no problem. All right, so this side, yeah, again, this graphic is way off. It's this time shifted up quite a bit. So this one's off again. Yeah, the key dot is off. All right, well, anyways, the top view is also got a racing stripe, and it's kind of going around this this ball is, I'm assuming there's a tachometer or something in this thing on the real car, but I don't know for sure. Maybe some black paint will be nice there. What I really like about this one is A, there's no side windows. So B, you can see the light colored interior. And actually that steering wheel, although it's blanked off, it's actually not as bad as some other ones. So, you know, you got the, the shifter there, some ribbing on the seats. And it's good to see, just being a light-colored plastic. I really wish every brand would buy some other plastic and show off their interiors better. Okay, so there's a bump here for the lock again. Cast it in a wing. Yeah, not, they couldn't do it any other way. And then, you know, the taillights here. Might have to add some red paint. So, all in all... For a mainline Hot Wheels that's actually around 164 scale, pretty good, pretty good. Now, I really wish there were some more premium brands would get into making, you know, old muscle cars. And I'm talking like things without opening hoods. I actually prefer this more than an Auto World or a Green Light because this thing is closed. All these gaps are consistent for me, so it looks good.
I really wish Mini GT would start doing some old classic American cars. You know, it's nice that they're doing the modern Corvettes and stuff like that. But obviously muscle cars will never die. So, okay, well, that's enough gibberish. Let me uh, come back with some wheels. And here we are with some uh, wheels here. These wheels are, you might no recognize them from the Datsun BREs. These are called American Racing Libre wheels. American Racing being the pretty old brand of a uh, wheel maker. And uh, it's odd that they're famous for being on an import car. But anyways, I think they look pretty cool on this car as well. Uh, they are classic wheels after all. Uh, you'll notice this one's a little steered because I decided to use some poster mount putty here to mount these because I didn't want to drill the base off. You know, there's no way I could mount these rear wheels unless I actually drill out the uh, bottom, which I don't feel like doing. So the tires, I've decided to now start uh, reusing a lot of my real rider tires because I've I bought a grab bag of like a hundred real riders and uh, I'm taking those wheels and putting them on my churro cues but I use churro cue tires for those and so I just have like 50 or 100 pairs of real rider tires so these are probably familiar to many of you as well as the thicker slick ones and uh, the wheels are actually the same size it's just that the tires are different Hot Wheels real riders but I think it works as far as trying to bring back some of that stagger you know Okay, uh, other than that, just added a little bit of paint. Uh, because the thing was so chromed, this is actually like a light gray instead. I actually put silver paint on it, but I could barely tell it was there. So kind of like Greenlight or Auto World, I'm using a white paint to get a better contrast versus the uh, chrome plastic piece. And looking at photos of the real car, the turn signals are behind a white lens cover. So. I think I added some black paint in this grill, but it's so shiny I don't think you can tell. I did add a little black paint up in here and here, and then the tail lights, yeah, a little red paint in there. So that's it. Okay. So obviously it's not going to roll because the thing's mounted with putty. So let's compare it to a couple of their muscle cars. Not particularly off the scale, but you know. It's a Hot Wheels, so I guess if you like collect these things, you're used to that. So one of my very early Hot Wheels 3D printed project is the good old 69 Camaro. And that one has 3D printed stock wheels and really staggered rear tires that are 3D printed also. Here's a... Um, Chevelle SS396 to 1969 version, which was one of those Hot Wheels premiums. Right. And then I'm going to squeeze on this extra one here, a 70 Chevelle wagon. I do like wagons. Now, this one I did drill apart because you can see I painted the interior like a tan color and I tapped out that whole, you know, rivet and it screwed together a bunch of spacers and stuff like that. So that one does reuse a, a Hot Wheels axle. But I think it's just quicker to use putty because I don't like rolling models anyways. And as you can see, <laughs> this one can roll, but these uh, little turntables, they just vibrate excessively. I can't find one that's smooth and I own like five or six of them now. All right, well, I think it's time for this thing to take a little spin on its own then. In front of this white photograph. Alright, well that's it for today's Hot Wheels 3D printed project. I am going to do plenty more because I have so many real rider tires that I'm going to be a little more open to getting some more main lines. I guess my main problem nowadays is running out of space. I have a feeling all my Hot Wheels are going to end up in a cardboard box somewhere because I, you know, I don't have room to display them, unfortunately. Alright, well thanks for watching guys and I'll see you the next time around. Bye.